black sarcophagus found in Egypt. In July 2018, construction workers found a sarcophagus buried 16 feet under a residential area of Alexandria in Egypt. The mysterious sarcophagus immediately became the centre of attention of the archaeological world. On close examination, the archaeologists estimated that it was probably from the Ptolemaic period, which had started after the death of Alexander the Great. The sarcophagus was six feet tall and nine feet long. It was the largest sarcophagus ever found in Alexandria. While everyone was curious to know who was buried inside the sarcophagus, some researchers hinted that it could contain the body of one of the most influential men in history, Alexander the Great. Some people warned that it would not be wise to open the sarcophagus as it might be cursed just like the King Tutankhamun's tomb was. It has been widely reported that in 1922, when the tomb of King Tutankhamun was opened, those involved with the discovery suffered from strange deaths. The archaeologists and their family members either died in strange accidents or suffered from strange illnesses until they died. However, the curious scientists were determined to unravel the mystery of the giant sarcophagus. Ignoring the warnings of the curse, they opened the sarcophagus just a few days after its discovery and found three skeletons inside. The sarcophagus had sewage water inside it and it resulted in accelerated decomposition of the human remains. According to researchers, the skeletons most probably belonged to the soldiers. One of the skeletons had a fractured skull caused by a sharp instrument. The archaeologists have not been able to get any clue about who these soldiers were or why they were buried together. The discovery of the sarcophagus under a residential area in Alexandria hints that there could probably be many other such remnants of the past lying under the city of Alexandria and other ancient cities in Egypt. The Mystery of the Octavius Ghost Ship Back on the 11th of October in 1771, a whaling crew had come across what they had believed to be a ghost ship sailing nearby. The crew sailed closer to the ship and noticed a strange sight. The ship appeared to have been completely iced over, with its sails torn and icicles protruding from every direction of the ship. This led to the captain of the whaling ship to order a boarding party to journey onto the ship and to assess the situation of what had occurred. It was at this point that the whaling crew became incredibly frightened. Upon boarding the ship, they described an impossible to understand sight as they realized that every crew member of the frozen ship was still on board, seemingly frozen in place. Their bodies were not in positions commonly seen when examining people of whom froze to death as they appeared to have been frozen in the middle of their activities. Even the captain of the ship appeared to have frozen in the middle of writing down a journal entry with a pen in hand. As the boarding party continued searching the ship, they became increasingly frightened and so quickly tried to grab the logbooks written by the ship's captain, only to later realize the middle of the logbook had frozen solid and fallen out, leaving only the first log entry and the last log entry for researchers to piece together what had happened. According to the logs, the ship had been stuck in the ice of the Arctic, leading researchers to believe that, somehow, the ship must have become dislodged and floated on freely though how it would end up near the shores of Greenland will never be understood. Lake Champlain and the Champ Cryptid Referred to as the Champ Cryptid, a popular Canadian monster residing deep within Lake Champlain, this creature has proven to be one of the most legendary monsters ever residing within the Canadian border. Located within the Canadian province of Quebec is that of Lake Champlain, a freshwater lake that holds more than 300 reported sightings of the serpentine-like creature that many claim is perhaps a distant cousin to that of the Loch Ness Monster. High-quality photographs taken back in 1977 that have been proven to be authentic have been gathered of the creature that show a plesiosaur-like body that leads many researchers to believe that perhaps this creature, as well as the Loch Ness Monster, could be a surviving modern-day species of the plesiosaur that must spawn in freshwater lakes at specific times of the year. Additionally, a recent camera recording of the Champ Cryptid, taken back in 2005 by a fisherman named Dick Affalter and his stepson Pete Baudet, 
showed video evidence of the Champ cryptid monster moving throughout the waters during the reported sighting. After two retired FBI forensic image specialists reviewed the footage, they found it to be authentic and unmanipulated. Scientific proof of the creature's existence has also been gathered in the modern day after a team of marine specialists working for the Fauna Communications Research Institute used an echolation device to map the bottom of the lake, only to pick up an unknown marine animal sound similar to that of the beluga whale, but from no known marine animal in existence. Today, the monster is revered as a status symbol to that of the Loch Ness Monster and has become the center of cryptid enthusiasts attempting to prove the viability of a surviving plesiosaur species in the modern day. Encounters with the Dover Demon First spotted back on the 21st of April in 1977 within the town of Dover, Massachusetts, was that of an alien-like creature that many residents have come to now know as the Dover Demon. The most remarkable fact surrounding the sighting of the creature is that, over the course of one night, there were three other independent sightings of the creature, with each sighting landing on a perfect straight line of each other. The first sighting occurred in the evening of April 21st when a teenage boy named William Bartlett, only 17 years old, was driving down Farm Street in the town of Dover. His witness report claimed that the creature walked on all fours, had tendril-like fingers, large glowing eyes and had been walking atop a stone wall with perfect balance. The second sighting occurred only a few hours later in which a boy by the name of John Baxter, only 15 years old at the time, claimed to have been seen by a creature fitting the same description, travelling nearby the Miller Hill Road. The third and final sighting of the Dover Demon occurred the next morning on the 22nd of April, when a young teenage girl named Abby Brabham, also only 15 years old, claimed to have been passing by Springdale Avenue and encountered the creature travelling in a straight line following the direction away from the previous sightings. When the location of each witness account is plotted on a map, they form a straight line, leading many to believe that the creature was travelling to a specific location or away from something that it had encountered. The travel distance between all three points was noted as being two miles in total distance. Despite each teenager having gone to police to report their findings, the police quickly dismissed the case and claimed that what had probably been seen was nothing more than a moose calf. To this day, the three still claim what they encountered was some sort of a monster and nothing native to our planet Earth. The Mystery of the Sphinx Originally a theory posited by the groundbreaking author Robert Temple, there appears to be overwhelming evidence that the Sphinx we know today was actually an attempt made by a pharaoh of the 4th dynasty to do nothing more than to claim the works of those before him. Evidence for this can be found when analysing the head-to-body ratio of the large statue. The head on the Sphinx is so small that many had often believed, upon first sight, that it could have been grinded down from a much more massive structure. The second piece of evidence is provided by the hieroglyphics located at the temple of Tep Tufa that outline in great detail that the original god of ancient Giza was Anubis as well as including the accounts and images of Anubis in his jackal form drawn all throughout the site in the same pose as of the body of the Sphinx with no mention of a lion of any kind at the ancient city. Interestingly enough, this exact same pose was discovered in one of the only tombs of an Egyptian pharaoh ever discovered that had been completely undisturbed since his burial, the tomb of Pharaoh Tutankhamun. Within King Tut's tomb is a shrine to Anubis that demonstrates an exact scale of the Sphinx statue but with the head of a jackal to represent Anubis, showing in overwhelming evidence that the original statue at the ancient city of Giza was supposed to be that of a jackal-headed Anubis and not that of a lion's body with a human head. So, where do we get the idea of a human's head and a lion's body? The truth is, the only reason why the statue is referred to as a sphinx is because of old Greek mythologies, such as those of Oedipus, that talk about a lion with the head of a man called a sphinx, but no such symbol exists in that of ancient Egypt. This means that the hieroglyphic texts that describe the sphinx with a human head to represent the pharaoh of the fourth dynasty were nothing more than forgeries by the then pharaoh to take credit for a great statue of which he had not created nor designed. 
Why this is remains a mystery to this day.